Hey guys, and welcome to CAD class, where in this class, we're gonna be going over my top 10 favorite tips and tricks to make your CAD modeling better, faster, and more efficient so you can level up your fusion skill set. This video is going to be dense and full of what we at CAD class called golden nuggets. Those are the little tips and tricks and tools you didn't know about, but as soon as you learn it, you can apply it to every single project that you work on. Some of these tools are going to be very, very simple, where others are going to be a little bit more advanced and niche. But I guarantee if you watch this entire video, you will learn something brand new. Side note, some of these tools are going to be completely universal across every single CAD program. So if you are a Fusion expert and you want to dabble into another program like Onshape, these tools will definitely help you out. We've split this video up into three main sections, user interface, 2D sketching, and 3D modeling. So if you guys have any tools or tricks that you love to use in your Fusion workload, then go ahead and leave it in the comments down below and it may end up in our next book or video. Number one, let's get started and make our entire Fusion account just that little bit more efficient. And we're gonna get started by going into our preferences. You can find this by clicking on your avatar in the top right hand corner, clicking on preferences, and then playing around in the general tab. This is going to be the top section. And we're going to be messing around with this tool at the bottom called Pan, Zoom and Orbit Shortcuts. Now by default, this is going to be set to Fusion, obviously. But what I want you guys to do is go ahead and change it over from Fusion to Tinkercad. Then we can click OK. And all this does is change around the orbiting style. Instead of using the Shift key and then the scroll wheel on your mouse to orbit around, all you need to do now is click and hold your right mouse button and you can orbit way easier. Number two, I want you guys to head back into your preferences, go into the design section, and make sure that you have scale entire sketch at first dimensions checked. Effectively, what this tool does is that if you're working on a 2D sketch and you add your first dimension, it's either going to be zooming out or zooming in so your entire sketch fits your entire screen. For example, I've got a very simple sketch of just some random shapes. And if I click on this large circle, you can see in the bottom right hand corner, it's got a diameter of about 100 millimeters. But let's say I want to make this really, really small. Let's say I dimension this circle to only be one millimeter. Well, as soon as I hit enter, it shrinks to show the actual size and then zooms in so my entire sketch fills up my entire screen. No more zooming in and out to make sure that it fits. For some reason, on some accounts, this isn't checked as a default setting. So go ahead and go into your preferences and double check that this is turned on because it's gonna save you a huge amount of time. And as a side note, as a really good practice, anytime you are working on a sketch, make sure you add your largest value first. Number three is just a standard of living upgrade. If you guys are working on Fusion in a fully tricked out computer with all of the bells and whistles, and you're still noticing it's a little bit laggy sometimes, well then this setting is going to be saving you a ton of headaches. A little background on Fusion. This is a program that is literally designed to work on almost any computer. So if your work gave you a laptop or it's something that you didn't spec out, it's going to be working almost identically as if you were working on a fully tricked out computer that you completely designed from scratch. And you won't really notice too much of a difference performance wise. For most projects, both of these computers are gonna be working just fine. But as soon as you're working on really, really large assemblies with hundreds or thousands of components, that's where you're going to be hitting the ceiling on Fusion. And it's probably a better idea to go into much more aggressive and complex programs like SolidWorks or Inventor. And for a long time, if you did want to increase the performance of Fusion on your computer, you had to read through about 10 separate Autodesk articles. But now that's all compressed into a single button. Currently on my screen, I've got my largest assembly file that consists of about a thousand components. And as you can probably immediately recognize, this is R2-D2's leg. And you'll notice when I'm orbiting around, it's incredibly slow and incredibly laggy. And as you'd imagine, this is going to be making for a pretty awful experience. But check this out. I'm gonna go into my navigation bar at the bottom of my screen, click on display settings, go to graphics preset and change it over to performance. And this simplifies the graphics just a little bit, but it means orbiting is now completely instant and completely snappy. Now you can go into your preferences and refine this even further by going into the graphics section and checking or unchecking any of these sections. But what I found is that most of them really don't do too much when you're working with larger assemblies. So keeping it on the performance, skipping quality, and to be honest, skipping custom is going to give you a perfectly fine experience. 
All right, let's move on to the 2D sketches tips and tricks. And even though some of these are very, very simple, they're actually my favorite tips and tricks to show off. And we'll get started with number four, the tangent dimension trick. A very, very common occurrence anytime you're doing 2D sketches is the need to dimension a circle to an edge. And most of the time you can do this just fine by using the normal dimension between the center of the circle and this edge. In fact, anytime you use the dimension tool, click on an edge and the circle itself, it's automatically going to be setting the distance between that line and the center point. And you have to do a little bit of math to say what is the radius of the circle plus the gap that I want to add on. But within Fusion, you can actually merge both of these steps together. So you only need to add the distance between the edge and the tangent dimension to the circle. Now, not a lot of people know about this tool because it's kind of hidden inside of Fusion. But let's go ahead and unlock it. I'm going to type D for dimension and I'm going to hover my cursor over the circle so it highlights in blue. And then I'm going to be right clicking. Then we can select pick circle and arc tangent. Now I can click on the circle and the line itself. And this is going to be giving me the distance between the circle's circumference and the line. Number five, let's check out how you can make an arc attached to a line with a tangent constraint all in one tool without having to go back and forth to the toolbar. Now it's pretty common in any design that you need to make an arc attached to a line. And the normal way to do this would be to type L for line, click on two points, hit escape, go into my create toolbar, click on arc, let's say three point arc, click once, click another place, click a third time. And then if I want to have a tangent relationship, go into my constraints toolbar and then click on the arc and the line. But instead we can actually compress all of those into a single button. Instead, I'm going to click on L for line, select one point, but then I'm going to be clicking and holding on the second end point. And when I move my cursor away, you can see it's automatically going to be making an attached arc that is inherently tangent that I can release to set the next end point. And then I still have the line tool open so I can then continue onwards and make more and more lines. And if I move my cursor to the correct spot, you can even see a small tangent icon already enabled right next to the end point of my arc. Number six is how you can select every single edge or curve of a profile incredibly quickly without having to do it individually. Now, very often I need to actually have every single edge and arc of a profile completely selected. Normally that means clicking and holding down the control or command button on your keyboard and then going around and clicking on every single edge. As you'd imagine, and you have more and more fillets or edges or polygons, this gets very, very annoying. And instead, all you need to do is double click any edge or arc of your profile, and it automatically selects every single edge. Finally, let's talk about some tips and tricks for your 3D modeling workspace. Again, these are going to be very, very quick and easy, but you can apply them to every single model and assembly. Number seven is all about increasing the organizations of your assemblies. Now, a really common mistake that we see our students running into all the time, anytime they're working on their first assembly projects, is that whenever they make a brand new component for a brand new part, they will be making one inside another. So they're constantly making sub-assemblies inside of sub-assemblies inside of sub-assemblies, and the entire thing gets way too complicated way too quickly. Here's a really good example of what can go wrong. Let's say you're working on an assembly project and you've just finished your second to last component and you're about to start your final parts to this project. Now, normally this means you would go into your assemble menu and click on new components. But as soon as you do this and click OK, you can now see that this component that you just want to make is now inside the previous components. And it's on a completely different level to all of the other components above. As some of you may know, the reason that this happened is because you made a new component while your previous component was already activated. And what you should have done is activated your assembly file and then made a new component. But as you can imagine, this is a problem that happens all the time and can get very confusing very quickly, but I do have a fix. As soon as you finished with this second to last component and you already know that it's activated, you don't need to go ahead and activate the assembly file. You can just go ahead and right click it and say, I would like to make a new component. And it is automatically going to be set at the exact same level as all of your other components. If you say, again, I want to make this a sub-assembly and make a new component inside of that, you can perform the same operation. We can say, this is the assembly file that I want to have all of my components inside. So you right click it and say, I want to make a new component, click okay. And this is now going to be making this secondary component inside of the one we just made. 
Number eight is all about reducing the amount of time that you're spending going back and forth to the toolbar to open up tools that you just used. Let's say you're working on a really big project and you're constantly using the same tools over and over and over again. And you really don't want to have to spend all this time going into the create menu and hunting for that right tool. Well, instead, you can just right click anywhere in the blank workspace to open up a window. And at the very, very bottom, there you go. You've got your most recently used tools. Number nine is all about adjusting where your hand should be on your keyboards to make it as efficient as possible. And that's all about using the escape key and the enter key. Now, just like any other CAD program, the escape key is your best friend, and it definitely applies to Fusion. Let's say you're working on a project and you've just highlighted everything, but you realize you actually don't need to do that, or you've got a tool open that you actually don't need. Well, that's why I always rest my finger on the escape key so I can deselect it anytime I need it. Although this seems like a really easy trick, you can find it across every single CAD program, where if you want to close down a tool or a menu, you can just hit escape and more than likely, it's going to be closing it so you don't even have to use your mouse. I really like this trick because closing down things is something that we do hundreds and hundreds of times across every single project. But let's say you want to have a shortcut to confirming tools. Well, that's where you can use the enter key. Let's say I want to extrude this profile upwards and I have a certain value in mind. Most often people are going to be going over to their dialog box and then trying to click on the OK button, but you don't need to do this. You can just hit the enter key and it will confirm all of these operations every single time. All right, guys, for our 10th tip and trick within Autodesk Fusion, I wanna showcase one of the newest tricks that I have up my sleeve. And I was taught this by one of the longest standing Autodesk Fusion team members. So thanks very much, Dan. On my screen right now is a very simple project. I've just got a nice flat wall and a circular profile that I would like to extrude all the way up to and then stop at this face. Now, this is a really easy and common operation, but it's one that requires a lot of clicks. If I want to do this, I need to type E for extrude, which is going to be automatically selecting the only profile in this file. And then I need to go into the extent type, change it to to object, and then click on this face. And that works, but it took a lot of clicks. Instead, I'm gonna be typing E for extrude and then simply clicking on that face. And as you can see, it does the exact same operation. It extrudes my profile all the way up to that face or points and stops. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this class. And if you learned something new in this video, go ahead and subscribe to CAD class so you can bring your 3D modeling skills to the next level. If you guys have any favorites, tips, or tricks that you use in your CAD modeling, we want to hear about it. We're going to be releasing another top 10 tips and tricks within Fusion and Onshape in the future, so we want to hear all about them so we can have some more CAD class shoutouts. If you guys want to learn more about CAD modeling in Fusion, then you can go ahead and check out our two books on the topic. We've got Fusion Fundamentals for the beginners to CAD. And if you're up to the challenge, we've got our Mastering Autodesk Fusion book right here that you guys can find over on Amazon if you want a physical copy, or if you want to download a digital ebook for free or a donation, then you can go ahead and find them over at cadclass.org. All right, guys, go ahead and make some more cool projects. We want to see them and we'll see you next time.